So, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm, uh, as Isa has said, I'm Ericsson Hulston, PhD student from Frankfurt, Germany. And I work in my PhD thesis about the application of British based modeling elements in out of Africa hypothesis. First, I would like to give you some general information about the uh, out of Africa theory. Out of Africa is, theory is a theory that genus Homo originated in Africa and from there spread all over Eurasia. The out of Africa dispersals could at least be distinguished into two different dispersal events, which involve different hominid species. Out of Africa 1 is the, uh, are the first out of Africa dispersals of species such as Homo erectus or Homo agasta, and it uh, started around 2 million years. And the second out of Africa dispersal, out of Africa 2, the dispersal of the modern human. What you can see here on these maps are the four routes that are currently discussed for the out of Africa dispersal. <coughs> these are the Babad Mandap route, the Levantine corridor, the Sicily route, and the Gibraltar route. Whereby in literature the Levantine corridor is the most favorite route since uh, the early hominids did not have to cross any sea barrier. And the uh, environmental conditions were suitable for the early hominids. When I speak of out of Africa, I mean um, the whole, all out of Africa dispersals that may have happened from 2 million years to 60,000 years. When we assume that the uh, early hominids dispersed out of Africa, we have to ask. Why did they disperse out of the African continent? And what I then did is look at the literature. What did also say, uh, what were possible reasons why they dispersed out of the African continent? What is stated, for example, is climatic changes. Several authors say that, for example, the aridification of the African continent during the Pleistocene forced hominid populations to uh, be pushed out of the African continent. And uh, some say that they dispersed because of vegetation changes. This implies that they had a certain vegetation preference, for example, open landscape, such as grassland or forested steppe, and they followed their preferred landscape out of the African continent. And it is, it is also said that sea level, level changes might play an important role, since a lo lowering of the sea level would give the hominids more opportunities to disperse to Eurasia. Um, biological and cognitive evolutionists stated they, um, it is said that for example, the earlier hominids <coughs> needed a certain cranial capacity to disperse into the northern regions, or that they invented new technologies, uh, new tools, uh, clothing that allowed them to disperse in new regions, um, <coughs> which, is, which, which are different from the uh, African habitat. And also so social organizations might play a role that they, that they were able to help each other so that they can survive under, different, uh, under more difficult environmental circumstances, circumstances. Demographic pressure, um, what is essentially population growth that exceeds carrying capacity so they had to disperse into new, new region because carrying capacity is weak. Um, some say that competition is important. For example, um, 
the early hominids may have competed with carnivores for the, the same food resources, <coughs> and uh, that the extinction of certain carnivores in Eurasia, like for example, large phalids like uh, Homotherion or Megatherion, allowed them, this ex extinction event allowed them to disperse into, the, uh, into Eurasia. And lastly, uh, food resources I mentioned. It is said that the early hominins heavily relied on meat resources from large herbivores. So when the herbivores dispersed out of the African continent, they followed the, the, the herbivores. These are the most common hypotheses that are found in literature. Um, the problem is that they that they are not really compared, and, um, and even for out of Africa one and out of Africa two, the dispersal of Homo erectus and Homo sapiens, all these uh, factors are mentioned, but it's very difficult to say what factor is more important than the other. Is it was it more because of climatic changes, or was it because um, the early hominins became smarter. And that is why I want to explore the capabilities of agent-based modeling to evaluate these out-of-Africa hypotheses. I think most of you know what agent-based modeling is. Anyways, I give some general information. Um, agent-based modeling, a uh, basic structure, an agent-based model consists of agents, these are the acting entities, they have uh, certain attributes and certain behavior, or multiple agents. They act on an environment according <coughs> to the rules of action and interaction, <coughs> and they may also interact with each other. And you find this structure in every agent-based model. For, I'll show you one example of an basic dispersal model I recently did. What you see is an <coughs> environment screen. Um, I added some barriers. Barriers um, um, are regions in this model where the hominids cannot disperse. This could be, for example, sea barriers, it could be uh, high mountains, but it could also be climatic barriers. And um, these green patches represent corridors. These are regions where hominins uh, can disperse. As for example, if, if you would assume that they preferred open landscapes, this would be open landscapes. What I then did, I don't know if you, you can see it, there's a plus and there's a minus. You see it? Yeah. Okay. Um, this is an, um, I added an explicit representation of push and pull factor. And in this example, I have one uh, pull factor, which is represented by a plus, and a push factor, that's, which is represented by a minus. And uh, I defined the push factor as a factor in this model that um, hominid populations avoid. And the uh, pull factor as a factor that how many populations are attracted to. For example, um, I added some agents that may represent the many population. They are <coughs> equally influenced by a uh, by, uh, push factor and the pull factor. And after some time steps, the distribution would look like this. It was um, easy to foresee that it would look like this, but um, you see the uh, effects of the push factor that the that the hominin agents disperse towards the pull factor and still avoid the push factor, and they um, do not distribute north of the pull factor. Um, and here you see some different population configurations, the different behavior. Um, in this, this population, they all started from the 
um, upper left corner and this population on the left side uh, on the right side is uh, more influenced <coughs> by the pull factor than by push factor so um, the distribution shows that they, they disper even um, are distributed north of the pull factor and on the other side you see a different configuration where they are more influenced by the push factor than by the pull factor just to show you that there there can be different behaviors can be modeled and they show a different distribution um, before I can start the actual agent-based modeling of the hypothesis, I have to answer some questions. And these are, what are the main factors that are associated with these persons out of Africa? I have to get an idea of what are the uh, common factors that are stated. And these are re represented by the out-of-Africa hypothesis I mentioned before. And then to translate these hypotheses into an agent-based model structure, um, I, have to, I have to look at the hypothesis and, and look what, what are the agents, what is the environment, and what are the possible interactions. Here again you see these different hypotheses. What I did as, in, as a first step is to group these hypotheses into scenarios, for example, the climate, vegetation, sea level, and uh, I also included geology, such as tectonic or volcanism, into the environment scenario, environmental scenario. And I included competition in food resources into the resources scenario, because competition is essentially competition for resources. It could not only be food resources, for example, raw material. Um, this resulted in four different out of Africa scenarios. These scenarios assume that one factor is the most important factor in the dispersal. In the environmental scenario, if I would make a model and then for the environmental scenario, I would assume that environment plays an important role. The same place for the resources, demography, and biological cognitive evolution. Here I show you an example of a scenario, the biological and cognitive evolution scenario, how I defined the agents, the environment, and the interaction. Um, for example, the agent attributes would be biological attributes, <coughs> depending on the research question. What, uh, for example, body size, brain size, cognitive attributes such as technology level, uh, levels of uh, social organization, and uh, behavior would be defined as biological adaptation and cognitive expansion. For example, the uh, the invention of new technologies. The environment would be an environment uh, it would consists of envi environment, uh, uh, and would be an environmental level with climate, climate uh, vegetation. Um, it all depends what is, it all depends on the research question what is then transformed into a model. But uh, this is just a framework and also resources because uh, they uh, invented new technologies <coughs> also to get better access to resources. The agent environment interaction would consist of coordinate and barriers that uh, could be, for example, environmental conditions that uh, corridors, environmental conditions that allow them to disperse and uh, that have uh, regions that have enough resources for them to survive. Barriers could be um, environmental conditions that not allowed, uh, that not allow them to disperse. Um, and um, regions with insufficient resources. Push and pull factors are, are active forces, such as, for example, competition. They 
high competition, um, I would assume that the early hominins avoided high competi competition or adapted to it. And pull factors could be uh, resource again. So they actively look for resources. And for the agent-agent interactions, there would be cultural tradition and bi biological inheritance and social organization. So, on the last slide, I'll um, give you an overview about the four stages process. The first stage was what I just presented, the identification of agent-based modeling elements in out of Africa hypothesis. The next step would be to evaluate potential data sources for depending on the research question, um, which also has to be defined. Um, data source for input data, reference data, and also more background knowledge data. And potential submodels, such as climate models uh, or dynamic vegetation models, and the exploration of the fundamental mechanisms of dispersal. That I start, just started with the spatial dispersal model, which consists of barriers, corridors, and push and pull factors. And then evaluate the scenario agent based model of the four scenarios um, according to a specific research question. The final step would be to integrate the uh, most relevant factors into one out of Africa agent based model. Again, research question specific. So that was my presentation. Thank you for your attention. And now I'm open to questions. Any suggestions? Um, yeah. Thank you.